Hi friends, welcome to another Lispy episode. Today I have one of my favorites and my librarian best friend, Q the Librarian, aka Karina Quilantan. And we are going to talk to you about a book that Karina found and shared with me and we're super duper excited about. So tell us about it. Yes, okay. So I had seen a couple of advertisements from Wednesday Books and uh, it was a book called The Mall by Megan McGafferty. And I was just completely hooked, one, because of the cover, the neon colors, um, maybe you can pull it up. Yes, it's so beautiful. It's that adorable. cover is gorgeous. And I love the neon lights because this book takes place in the early 90s and I feel that, uh, and in the mall, right? So 90s mall setting. And I feel like back in the 90s, you know, we had a lot of signage that was very neon and it just kind of brought back that 90s nostalgia. So I was pretty stoked to read it and I found it on NetGalley and I told Stephanie, dude, we need to read it because if we don't read it and do a review about it, I don't know what I'm going to do. So and here we go. She told me about it. I was like, why does the author's name sound so damn familiar? And I could not figure it out. So of course, I went to my Goodreads app and I was like, why does Megan McGafferty sound so familiar? So if y'all remember, and you might not, but either way, when I was in like middle school, high school, there was a series called the Jessica Darling series about this girl and her best friend and how the girl falls in love with this guy named Marcus, who's like a douche, but then they kind of grow up and as the series goes on, he gets better and I don't remember all of it, but it's a long, it's like a five part series. <coughs> Excuse oh, wow. me. The first one is called Sloppy Firsts. I don't know, but it's like something seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. Anyway, it was one of my all time favorite series growing up. And so I remembered that she wrote that series. And so I was super excited that she had a new book coming out. So Karina found it on NetGalley. We requested it, we read it, and it was amazing. So cute. I loved so it. Much. So like she said, it is set in 91 in the mall and it starts with our main character having mono. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And on her I mean, I don't love mono, but I'm saying it's kind of funny. <laughs> and on her first day, going back to work, because like every kid in the 90s, they had jobs at the mall. I'm going to say they, because I was not one of them. I was born in 89. So in 91, I was only two. No, oh, you're so cute. Anyway, <laughs> so on her first day back to work, she and her boyfriend are walking into the mall, and he freaking dumps her. What a jerk. Oh, he's such a dick. And as he's dumping her, this girl comes out screaming. You want to you tell them what it is? Die, mono bitch! <laughs> and sprays her with some stuff from Bath and Body Works. So not only is she being dumped, she's getting attacked with a smell. <laughs> And she's being called a mono bitch. Dude, that in itself, like, I was hooked. I'm like, I don't know where the story's going, but, like, count me I'm in. in I'm in. <laughs> and we find out that her boyfriend was cheating on her with uh, this girl while she was stuck with mono. And then she walks into her job and... Only to find out that she's going to be let go. So keep in mind that this chick, Cassie, right, she is this, you know, goody-goody type of girl, straight A, according to the plan, you know, her and her boyfriend were going to stay together, go to college together, you know, probably get married, form this amazing alliance, and then take over the world. Yeah, take over the world, and then he breaks up with her for, like, this random chick. Um, all the while, you know, she's at home sick, mind you, right? <laughs> which which really sucks i'd be so pissed but um it's just so funny watching her go through like this downward spiral at the beginning of a novel which is why i loved it so much because as far as like character arcs and character development it's always you know the character you introduce them you kind of know their story okay some rising action you know turning points the character goes through this dramatic you know, event. And I love that this story just started from the it beginning. Like, <laughs> like, die! <laughs> die! <laughs> and you're kind of wondering, like, where is this going? And I love it so much already. <laughs> so then from there, she's automatically, like, she's still in the mall after getting fired. And it's like, all right, new job, let's go. 
and she's just like wandering around and she has this really weird rating scale according to like 90210 characters yeah she has so she goes to interviews at like the high scaled places she thinks of and obviously she doesn't get in because she's not qualified and then she goes to the store called bella rosa boutique which is her ex-best friend's mom's store and if you remember like tight dresses that are just like tube dresses and like bright colors and like poofy things that's what they sell and big hair big hair and bad hands and just cakes of makeup yeah yeah so she goes in there and she obviously does not fit in like she's a t-shirts and jeans kind of girl and she she's like I, I can't work here well we come to find out that the Bella Rosa's no good cousin Crystal has <laughs> no been doing a terrible job of their books and they need a new accountant and because she's a goody goody she gets straight A's she knows math she gets hired on the spot yeah and, and she they- kind of finds her own system for doing things. And it's just really neat to see her kind of admit the fact that she is completely unqualified <laughs> for this position. And she's like, I don't even, I'm not even qualified to be a bookkeeper. Like I literally just graduated from high school. I don't know what I'm doing. And then to add, you know, an extra layer of total anxiety, it's with her former best friend, Drea who is the complete opposite of her, you know, total glam, total 90s chic. Lives in um, heat. Yes, total fashionista. And then you have the opposite side of the spectrum, which is Cassie in jeans and band t-shirts. But they come together because they find out, well, according to Drea, Drea tells Cassie, you know, they get into a conversation saying that legend has it that there was some guy, <laughs> yeah, long war, yeah, some guy left a treasure behind in the mall before you know he left or died or something like that. <laughs> and I don't know. And and Drea is determined to figure it out and determined to find the treasure. And she knows that the only way that she's going to be able to crack this code to this treasure hunt is Cassie. So like for her, things couldn't have worked out in a better way because now she has this mega nerd to help her, you know, solve the mystery. And yet I really, really liked that they did not place too much emphasis on why Drea wanted the treasure so badly. Until the end. Yeah. And so like you think it's like, oh, you know, it's a fun summer activity, right? What are you going to do in the 90s? And you hear that there's a treasure at the mall. But you find out later that Drea wants this treasure for something specifically. And I like that they didn't reveal that until the very, very end. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, <laughs> so in the treasure hunt, um, along with their quest for treasure, Drea has a quest to get Cassie to have a new boyfriend. And she says the best way to get over someone is to get under someone new. And so she pushes Cassie out of her comfort zone, makes her cute, and like puts her out in these awkward situations where she's going to meet rando guys. And they stumble into like this weird, un- like basement storage room where everybody from the mall works. It's super gross. Super grody and gross. Yeah, it's nasty. And while she's making out with some weird guy, <laughs> she finds the cabbage patch, which is what it sounds like. It's this like room full of old cabbage patch kids. And the Cabbage Patch Kids lead them to the stores that will hold the clues to the treasure. And they figure out which ones it is because they have weird names, like not normal Cabbage Patch Kids names, which I was like, I didn't even know any Cabbage Patch Kid names were normal. Yeah, they came with birth certificates. (laughs) I don't remember having, I had the one that like you could feed. Like oh, put their fingers in, oh, rah, 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 rah. and then like they were recalling them because hair was getting trapped in one. Oh my god, <laughs> that was the only one I had. Uh, yeah, I, my sister had Cabbage Patch dolls, and I was I was always freaked out by them though. Like yeah. I really felt that they were gonna come alive at night for some reason. Yeah. I guess I watched too many scary movies as a kid. I don't know why. Blame my parents, but like I always, I always thought they were super creepy, and I like that they pinpoint that in the novel. Like, okay, what is a room of random Cabbage Patch dolls doing in the middle of this weird basement, like completely out of place, but yet somehow, 
you find it just works. Yeah, it just works. Yeah, I mean, there's treasure, by the way. Cabbage Patch and treasures. Somehow it just like works together. <laughs> And so then while they're doing their quest, like they have also, they've also got to work every day. And then Cassie finds out that her parents who not only have been together forever, they work together. They have a business together. They're both, they're both orthodontists or dentists, something to do with teeth. I think dentist and orthodontist. Okay. Something like that. They're yeah. getting a divorce. Yeah. So bam, divorce. And then she finds out that her ex-boyfriend wants to come back. And by this point, she has met someone new. And the Ooh. really cool thing about the story is that we don't really ever meet or like learn people's real names because she refers yes. to one as their mall name. <laughs> and we meet this boy who's just dreamy and alternative. Yes. And his name is Sam Goody. So the whole thing <laughs> is Sam. So at the very end, like this was like the Sex in the City big reveal about like what Big's real name was for me. Yeah. But, we find out his real name on like the last page of the book and it's lame. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was Sam Goody. Uh, Dude, I feel like Sam Goody was the actual representation of the boyfriend that I would have like, that I dreamt of having when I was a teenager. I know, I mean, music, I, I like to pretend that I was like real punk rock and emo, right? Just so misunderstood. <laughs> we were all so misunderstood oh, to me for that age. Angst. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, because I loved going to Sam Goody. I loved getting new albums. I loved underground music. And, you know, I don't know about Oh, I don't know if anybody knows this, but like, <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. But there's like this thing in Mexico, man, like teenagers for some reason, or at least when I was growing up, I can just speak of this, like teenage Mexicans, dude, we loved Morrissey. It's like a thing. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's weird. I don't know why of like all of all people like Morrissey, right? I guess because he's just, you know, just so dark and lovely but anyway as, as we all are <laughs> i know right okay. i don't know i just really like that whole bit of music pop culture there that was like my favorite i'm like this this author is just throwing in some awesome music references and really like did. Yeah. yeah and we made a youtube playlist <laughs> with the music that was referenced in the book so if you yeah. want it um i'll link it in the comments for this video but karina built it and it's called the mall fan playlist. <laughs> all fan playlist. I yeah. like it. So this is a really cool story. I really, really liked it. It's a fun summer read because it takes place the summer before she leaves to college. Um, it's a really cool story about friendship, about love, about cheating boyfriends and no good cousins, um, bad tans and makeup, and being true to yourself. And it, I really liked it because it was also kind of about like, not just working with people you don't like, but having to deal with people that are different from you, like having to get along with someone that is just a complete opposite of who you are yeah. um, and that you got to support your family no matter what. And she learns that along the way. So it was really, really cool. I loved it. And it also made me feel really old. And <laughs> I love it. If you were our age when you were reading these books and you love Lisa Frank and, oh my gosh. and all the 90s things, it's time for yeah. you it's time for your moisturizer. You gotta put your moisturizer on right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm dying. If you don't have a moisturizer, go get one. Yeah. It's important. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, that is our, our The Mall by Megan McCafferty review. It comes out on July 28th. It was Ooh. awesome. I highly recommend reading it with a friend because it was super fun, fun. Yes. It was fun to read it together. It's a and, great like, story to read with your friend. I loved it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Like I said, we got it from NetGalley. You can probably still get it on NetGalley for the next couple of days or weeks. Um, if not, support authors and get it on Amazon or indie bookstores, wherever you get books. Yay! Cool. Thanks, y'all. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay hydrated. Bye! Bye.